Hello, good morning, and welcome to Introduction to Literature. And today we're going to study types of poetry. Yeah, in this world there are many types of poetry, but today we're going to study some of them. Uh, there are several types of poetry that we're going to study today, which is epic poetry, sonnet, haiku, limerick, ode, elegy, epitaph, free verse, and also ballad. Now, let's study the first one, would be epic poetry. So, epic poetry, it is a form of poetry which is lengthy in size. Yeah, lengthy means long. And portray the protagonist in action of historical significance of great or great mythic, I suppose, right? So, it is the, the size is long, lengthy in size, and also it tells us about the protagonist in action. For example, we have Beowulf. We got a lot of ancient poetry. You can uh, read it by yourself, this poetry entitled The Story. It's a story about the Gilgamesh. So the poem is about the Gilgamesh. It's the ancient heroes or kings. Uh, and he built something for the kingdom, for the kingdom, I think. Okay. So, epic poetry would be lengthy in size, very long poetry, and portray hero in great mythic. The next one would be sonnet. The word sonnet is derived from Italian word sonetto, which means a small or little song or lyric. It is a very distinctive uh, kind of poem, which has 40 lines. Yeah. Sonnet. Itu khusus puisi yang terdiri dari 14 baris And it usually has 10 syllables in its line Satu baris biasanya terdapat 10 silabel Ya, contohnya sonet 130 by William Shakespeare Ya, this is 14 line 14 lines Each line have 10 syllables Next one, we have haiku. A haiku is a poem has, that has three lines. The line of such poem rarely rhyme with each other. Three lines without rhyme. Haiku. For example, Old Pawn by Basho. Old Pawn a frog jumps the sound of water. This is haiku, a poem which has three lines. Next one will be limerick. Limerick is humorous poem. It means to be funny, yeah, humorous. Written in five lines, yeah, five lines, lima baris, with a strict rhyme theme of a a b b a. Yeah. Rimanya harus a a b b a. In which the first, second, and fifth line rhyme, while the third and fourth lines are shorter and share different rhyme. Contohnya. Poem From to Miss Vera Berger by Louis Carroll. There was a young lady of station. I love man was her sole exclamation. But when man cried, You flutter, she replied, Oh, no matter. I love man is true explanation. Yeah? Satu, dua, lima, rimanya sama. Kemudian, tiga dan empat punya rima yang beda. That's limerick, funny or humorous poem. Next one is ode. Some people call it ode, some people call it ode. Yeah, ode is derived from Greek word agent, agent, which means to chant or sing, bernyanyi, yeah, untuk dinyanyikan. Ode is a literary technique that is lyrical in nature but not very lengthy, not very lengthy, yeah, singkat, biasanya. Not very lengthy. You have often read poets in which both praise people, natural scenes, and abstract ideas. Biasanya digunakan untuk memuji orang, memuji alam, dan lain-lain. Atau mungkin ide-ide yang abstrak adalah out, which means to chant or sing. Next one is elegy. Elegy is a self-poem. 
usually written to praise and express sorrow for someone who is dead. Yeah. At a Jesus at home, we see kesedihan. Usually written to praise and express sorrow untuk mengekspresikan kesedihan kepada orang yang sudah meninggal. The purpose of the kind of poem is to express feelings rather than tell the story untuk mengekspresikan rasa kesedihannya namanya elegy. Contohnya, a poem from Willow Chicken, the banana green trees look like clouds against the ominous black sky. Now the color of a ripening bruise and I stood there waiting even after the first rock fell infinitely pondering why the water burned. Yeah, this is one interesting poem. It's called Epitaph. An Epitaph is a short text. Very short. Yeah, sangat singkat. Honoring a deceased person. Orang yang sudah meninggal. Strictly speaking, it refers to text that is inscribed on a tombstone or plate. Yeah, teksnya singkat, poemnya sangat singkat untuk mengerti orang yang sudah meninggal dan biasanya ditulis di nisan atau di atas makam. Ya, contohnya seperti ini. Beneath this stone, a lump of clay lies stingy Jimmy Wyatt. Who died one morning just at ten and served for dinner by it. Yeah. And we have free verse. So free verse is a literary device that can be defined as poetry that is free from limitation of regular meter or rhyme or rhythm and does not rhyme with fixed norm. Oh, I'm sorry. Fixed poems, such poems are without rhythm and rhyme scenes, do not follow regular rhyme scenes rules, yet still provide artistic expression. Free verse mean free, bebas ya. Dia nggak mengikuti rima atau ritme tertentu, tapi masih punya artistic expression. Contohnya seperti ini, the puisi dari Come Slowly Hayden by Emily Dickinson. Come slowly, Eden, leap unused to thee, bashful ship thy jasmine as the fainting bee. Reaching late his flower round the chamber hums, count his nectar lights and is lost in bound. Yes. Rimanya tidak teratur, tapi kita masih bisa merasakan uh, ekspresi artistik dari penulisnya. It's called free verse. Okay, last but not least, we have ballad. A ballad is an art poem that was originally uh, set to music. Ballads were first created in medieval France, and the word ballads comes from the French term chanson ballade, which means a dancing song. Usually, the poem is you is used for singing, yeah, to be sang, yeah. And we have example here, example of ballad of Birmingham. Mother dear, may I go downtown? He set out to play and march the street of Birmingham in a freedom march today. No baby, no, you may not go, for the dogs are fierce and wild, and clubs and houses, guns and jails ain't go for a little time. But mother, I will go alone, and the children will go with me, and march the street of Birmingham to make our country free. No, baby, no, you may not go, for I fear those guns will fire. But you may go to church instead and sing in the children's choir. She has come and bruised her night dark hair and battered rose with her sweet, and drawn white gloves on her small brown hands and white shoes on her feet. The mother smiled to know her child was in the second place, but that smile was the last smile to come upon her face. For when she heard the explosion, her eyes grew wet and wild. She raced through the street of Birmingham, calling fortune. She crawled through pits of glass and bricks, and lifted out a shoe. Oh, here's the shoe my baby wore, but baby, where are you? So, uh, that's it for today. Thank you very much for your attention, and see you again next time.